Hi friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And I have a new, I'm gonna call it a mini series. I think it's gonna have three videos, uh, depending on how it goes, maybe four. But we are going to make a journal that I am envisioning is gonna work sort of like an advent calendar. So let me try to explain. I am going to use these beautiful papers by Joey Cardmaker. It is the Yuletide Cheer Collection. So there's a full junk journal kit, got these pretty, um, on Etsy that you can purchase, which I did, and I'm so excited because I think they're beautiful. And um, he also has a couple of freebies on his Kofi shop that coordinate with this. And um, I have the papers kind of all mixed together, but the collage papers are, are the freebies. So you get um, that collage sheet and then several of these types of papers in different colors that you can tear and use. And then there's also a freebie of numbers. And I'm gonna tell you, and that's what gave me this idea. So anyway, there's so much to this collection and I love it. You can use though, for this project, I mean, you can use any papers you want, but the way the journal is, I envision the journal working, I've never made one before, but the way I envision it working is we're gonna have our pages in our journal and on each spread, there's gonna be a fun pocket with the, the day of the month. So we're gonna go, Start with one for the 1st of December through 25 through Christmas. And each time you, you turn a page, there'll be a pocket. It'll be numbered. And then we're going to make some beautiful tags and use the ephemera pieces to um, decorate and stuff in those pockets. So it'll be something just to explore each day as we head up into Christmas. So that is my vision. And today what we're going to do, I'm going to set these aside. We are going to actually... Um, assemble the journal and um, get started. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do mine. You can do yours however you like, again, and with whatever papers. But we're going to start with um, some chipboard. And I'm going to cover the chipboard, even though it's already kind of a nice brown, with some of this packing paper. I've used it in other projects before. We're going to cover the journal and the spine and the packing paper and decorate the cover and sew in the signature. So some of this is some techniques that I've shown you guys before, but that's okay. We are going to put the spine on in a little different way, which I'll show you as well. And then um, I'll give you a sneak peek into what we're gonna do in the next video, which is gonna be those pockets that are actually gonna count us down to Christmas. So I'm super excited. So I will have measurements for you as always in the descriptions of the video. So the first thing you need are two pieces of cardstock. And this is gonna be your cover that are eight and seven eighths inch. If that bothers you, you can just go to nine, but I decided to do eight and seven eighths by six. So it's gonna be you know, a nice size journal and you need two of those. And then to make the spine, you need one piece of chipboard that is that same height, eight and seven eighths. And again, you really can't go up to nine if you want to. Eight and seven eighths by five and a half. And I'm going to show you how we're going to make the spine out of this piece in a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to cover these with the packing paper. And I'm going to start using my glue stick. We're going to use a couple of different kinds of adhesive. But I am just going to lay the glue stick onto the chipboard and we're gonna you know I'm, I'm just sort of um, centering it on this packing paper and guys the packing paper I cut mine to be I think this is eight and a quarter by eleven just you just want enough to be able to wrap this around and I like see where my bone folder is um, I like how it looks kind of crinkly 
if you guys can see that. Um, but we're just going to wrap it and then we're gonna be putting pretty things on top of it, layered on top of it. I'm looking for my little tool that helps me miter the corners easily. Um, if you guys wanna see some of the tools or supplies that I use, I do have my Amazon storefront linked in the description for you. It's an affiliate link, so no cost to you, but Amazon does give me a few pennies if you end up making a purchase, but no, no worries, you don't have to do that. But if you wanna see some of the supplies I use, um, like this little tool here, um, my favorite glues and adhesives, papers, all of those kinds of things. This paper is just that packing paper that comes like when you order things from Amazon or wherever, and I love using it. I save it. I know people think I'm crazy, but it's an easy way for me to be able to recycle and make a little bit of a difference, right? All right, this paper is very easy, I think, to work with. The corners fold up super neat because it's so thin. But by wrapping the um, chipboard with um, the paper, you know, it has plenty of thickness. Okay, I wouldn't use um, for this particular journal because I, it is going to have a spine and we're going to sew sig the signatures in. Um, I wouldn't just use the paper with a piece of... of um, like cardstock glued to it. And I've done that for soft-sided journals that aren't as large and it works just fine. So I'm gonna use the glue stick to push this, to put this down because we're gonna be layering. This is the actually the inside of our cover and it's going to get layered with paper over it. And I think I've shown you guys the way to kind of make these corners fold up neatly is to kind of smush it over some. With this paper, a lot of times I can skip that step, but if I see the corner not folding up neatly, you definitely want to, now's the time to stop and do that. Kind of squish it over just a little and you get a really nice neat corner. I may, so because I'm gonna layer paper, this is all gonna get sandwiched together and that's why I'm not worrying too much and I'm just using my glue stick. But I may later come back with some of my wet white glue and get, a, get it down a little more. But we're okay for now. So look how good that looks. All right, so that's gonna be either the front or the back cover. They're the same. So we've gotta do one more of those. And again, the paper here is about eight and a quarter by 11 so that it is enough to wrap it. And this is my, my favorite glue stick. There's lots of good glue sticks out there. I wouldn't use um, like one that's removable or an, an inexpensive glue stick because I do think those lift up over time. Um, but I have not had this one fail on me so far. It <laughs> doesn't mean I guess it couldn't, but I've had good luck with it. All right. And I do like to flip it over and just kind of make sure there's no big, huge creases or something that I'm not happy with because this is the cover of my journal. And again, I'm just going to quickly miter the corners. So, um... I will have the paper kit that I'm using for this series linked as well as um, Joey's Kofi shop that has the freebies if you wanna just kinda check it out. I know he would appreciate that, but I will link that for you in the description. But again, you can use any papers that you know you like and you think would make a journal that you would like to use as an advent calendar. Um, this one is particularly nice because it has those numbers. I believe his Let's Be Jolly kit from last year, which is one of my favorites and that I use a lot, um, also has numbers. Um, and I just, because I wanna make this as a advent calendar I definitely want some numbers I think he has them going all the way through 31 if you actually even wanted to do like a full month of dates you could but um like I said I just I don't know this this idea may have already been done I don't know 
but I was looking at the papers and trying to decide what I wanted to make <laughs> because they're so pretty and that's what came to mind. So we are gonna try it together. And um, a lot of times I have already made one of whatever it is we're going to make so that you guys can see it. And I know this one is a little more difficult to visualize because we're just, I'm just going for it. We are gonna do it together. I do have things sort of planned out. I've made some of the pockets and I'm using book page as the base for some of those pockets. But um, yeah, this is gonna be an adventure together. All right, so we've covered the front and back covers. And then they'll get the, the at least the front will definitely get de decorated. Now, let me show you what we're gonna do for the spine. I'm gonna make it similar to the way I do my um, little golden book covers. I really like that look. So we're gonna try it with this as well. So you need this piece of cardstock, and again, the measurements will be there for you, but it's five and a half by eight and seven eighths. And on this five and a half inch side, we are gonna score it at two inches, and we are gonna score it at three and a half. Now what that's gonna do, this is gonna be our spine right here. It's a one and a half inch spine. And these flaps are gonna be how it attaches to the cover. So a lot of times you see a piece like this, like why do you need a spine that wide? Well, it's only gonna be an inch and a half and there's gonna be two signatures. Um, so that's what I've decided for this particular journal. So what I like to do when I'm making a spine like this, so I like to again, make sure everything is nice and neat. I'm just gonna work on those creases. This is chipboard, so I am having to kind of use some pressure there. And we are going to cover this with that same packing paper so that it looks nice and neat. And then we're gonna put some pretty decorative paper on there. So, um, we're gonna cover it the exact same way. This piece of paper is about the same, the 11, Eight, eight and a quarter by 11, I just cut three pieces, but um, this piece is a smidge smaller, so it looks bigger. Again, you just need enough to be able to wrap it sort of like a present. Doesn't have to be perfect because everything's gonna get layered and it's gonna look great. Okay. So I'm gonna stick that down. I, I wrote myself a note on there, but again, it's all gonna get covered up, so it's not going to matter. But if you're worried about it, you can also just erase it. Sometimes it's nice to have notes to yourself on the pieces when you're prepping for a video. <laughs> all right, so we're doing the same thing again. We're going to miter these corners, and you don't need this tool to do this. You know, you can just pick up your scissors and carefully um, cut, got a little glue there, um, you know, carefully cut it, but I make a lot of journals, and I want to say this is like 10 or $12, something like that, and for me, it was just a, a well worth it purchase. <laughs> okay, to make it easy, easy peasy, and I'm finding I did not get glue well on the corners, but again, it's all gonna get wrapped up, so it's not super critical. Okay, we're gonna keep going. If you haven't, please um, subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you follow along and you'll get then notified. Um, if you hit that little button um, and pick notifications whenever I drop new content. I've been on a pace here for a few months where I'm able to get new content up just about every day. I imagine that will change some as we go through the holiday season. I have. I have a lot going on. Um, and, you know, family and, and other activities. But we'll see. Um, I love working on my business. And I love 
sharing what I love crafting with you guys. So um, I do try to stay super active on here for you. So I hope you'll join me. And of course, give the video a thumbs up, leave me a comment, all those things so I know you're out there and that I'm not all alone. How's that? I am going to now grab my wet white glue. I'm gonna use my um, Line Co brand PVA glue. And I haven't shown it lately, it looks like this. Um, and there's different sizes you can buy if you wanna try it out. And then I just put it in these cute little bottles to make it easy for me to use it. I didn't get the glue on here the best, so I'm just gonna lay a little bit down. But again, it's okay. It's all okay. All right. So, this is actually going to be the outside of the spine, and you're gonna see in a minute what happens, and then this is the inside. And the way we're gonna, we're first gonna cover this, but this is going to come together like this. All right, so we're gonna have a nice spine that's gonna get covered with decorative paper. These are going to be decorated, and um, it's all gonna look beautiful. Um, these don't seem very thick, but again, I wanted a journal that has a nice feel to it. You could use book board or multiple layers of chipboard if you want yours to be a little sturdier, but I am okay with mine um, being what I consider kind of a sturdy soft back <laughs> or a thin hard back. Okay. I've already got my signatures prepared and we'll look at those together in a minute. But I have some papers and um, I kind of want to think about what I want the front of my journal to look like before I worry too much about the inside. And I definitely want to use this Christmas tree. So I was thinking, I'm gonna get some distressing going. I'm definitely um, thinking this Christmas tree, I may later come back with some of the elements from the kit and add even more to the cover, to the like as a collage or whatever. Um, but for now, I think I'm just gonna put these two pieces. I printed this on um, a medium weight cardstock. It's 90 pounds, again, not super thick. And I did the pages on the same paper. So this is gonna be beautiful. Look at that. Um, because I like having the pages inside the journal a little bit sturdier than just like a regular printer paper. We're gonna go ahead and glue this down for the cover. And, um, and sometimes I don't do that or I do a variety of different textures. But for this one, I wanted each page to be nice and sturdy and to be able to hold uh, the pockets, the embellishments, the different things I plan to add to each page. Okay, and I left a border around of that packing paper. So to give you a measurement, again, you can decorate yours with whatever papers you have, but I cut this piece to um, one, two, one, two, Um, one, two, it's like five and three eighths. Sorry, my brain isn't working by eight because I just wanted kind of that quarter of an inch around. Got a little more ink. I am using my favorite brown, which is the walnut stain. This is the new one and look, it's already getting, I, I tend to put the dauber when it's closed right on top of it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna glue this one down. And again, I am already thinking there'll be some ribbons, maybe some lace, some decorations. We're gonna really make this one special. But for now, that'll be kind of what we're looking at for the cover, the front cover. Now, for the inside covers, 
um, trying to decide. Do I want to put the spine on and then do the inside cover? Because you will see this flap here. Or we can go ahead and put it down and then when I layer these on, I think we'll do that. Let, let's go ahead and assemble it. Okay, again, I'm having to think through this as I go. The, the piece that is going to be actually the spine that you see, we are going to glue down one of these strips and this is going to be what the spine looks like. And then we're gonna put one on the inside too. So this strip of paper is one and a half inches because that's the width of our spine and it is the height as well, eight and seven eighths. And it's gonna glue right into that section and it's going to look fabulous. I could have made this larger and it would probably do better. Hmm, that's what I should have done. Ignore that measurement that I just gave you and we are going to <clears throat> correct that by getting a piece of paper that's eight and seven eighths and wider so that I don't have to worry about the adhesive on that fold. So give me one moment. And I may have to, depending on what I have printed, change the color, but that's okay. I don't mind changing my colors. All of the papers coordinate so well together, they're so beautiful that it really, it really doesn't matter. All right, so I said I need eight and seven eighths, probably by like five. So I'm gonna cut that over here, I hope you guys can hear me. And let me get that eight and seven eighths. And I'm using part of the yellow. I did like the stripes and the little ornaments on this one that I had sort of thought through. But we're just going to get some yellow with a little bit of the trim. Because you're not going to see even where that bow is. But it's okay. We can always add a little more to the spine as well if we want to. I should have thought through that. I will use one of these for the inside. All right. So now we're gonna glue this portion down. And then we're gonna make sure everything is still creasing and folding well for our spine. And I, I knew this, because this is again the same, the same design concept that I use for like my little golden books and other some other hardcover journals that I make regularly. And I knew that this piece needed to be larger. If I had used that skinny piece, you're gonna see what's gonna happen. What would have happened is, this would have just been glued on there and then we'd have the possibility of this pulling up and I don't want that. But doesn't that spine, I think it's gonna look great with this yellow paper. It's like a gold color. Okay. It looks good. Let me get my cover. This is what it's gonna look like. I love it. And I think I'm gonna put the wider strip at the top. All right, and that might impact what paper I wanna use for the back, but I'm not gonna worry about decorating the back just yet. All right, so now let's attach it. I am going to use two-sided tape and, oh, you know what? I'm gonna close up my new ink pad to help it not dry out so much. All right, so you're gonna want to add generously two-sided tape, because this is what's holding your journal together, okay? To this panel and to this panel, leave the actual spine itself without any tape, of course, because that's what's gonna be exposed. So I'm gonna do two, one along each edge, and then we're gonna go one down the middle, and I'm using half inch. You could use one wider if you wanted to, if all you have is the narrow. You may just have to put a few more strips. And we are going to also 
once I put these on and pull the strips of paper up, we will add some wet white glue to give us a little bit of wiggle room and some extra stick, especially in between where the tape is. Okay, so I just like to burnish it down really well with my bone folder. Make sure we get it sticking really well. And this, okay, we're gonna work on this side first. So we're gonna pull each of these up using the fingernail tool, if we can. And then, like I said, we're gonna add quite a bit of this all over and especially in between where the tape is. But this allows us, if we have to make a little adjustment, it, it'll let us wiggle just a little even with that tape on there. If you don't, you can skip this step, but then if you get off even just a little bit, that, that tape is not gonna release. <laughs> You're committed, okay. And you want to bring the cover right to the crease line. And you want it to be nice and neat. And I don't know if y'all saw that, I was able to just kind of smush mine just a little before I start pressing it down. I wiggled it just a touch to get it even. Whoops, look at that, I just tore my paper. This was not completely dry yet. But that's going to get covered up, so it's okay, but be, be gentle. I was not gentle, so be careful. All right, it looks great. You can um, use a binder clip after you get these on to give this time to kind of set really well. Uh, with my um, thicker covers and things, a lot of times I will put the binder clip on and leave it for a few hours or overnight. Uh, not going to do that today because we're on camera, but I'm sure it will be fine. I may add the binder clips later to just make sure everything is happy. <laughs> All right, a little more glue. And then we're going to stick the back cover on. So, um... If you guys decide to make an advent journal with me, let me know. I would love to know um, what you're doing and what papers you chose. You can also, like I said, I think the only thing I would say if you want it to be an advent one is you're going to need numbers. But you could make those yourself. You could print those in lots of different ways. All right, this one, it doesn't matter which direction because I haven't decorated it yet. And we're putting it on the same way. Nice and even. Um, again, you can make the numbers yourself. You can print out good hand write them. Um, so let me know what paper you choose to use. And if you're going to make one, because I would love to hear about it. Oh, I'm already really happy with this. It's going to look great. Okay. Now, the inside covers, I have a few choices, and I think I'm going to use the two reds so they sort of match. Is that what I'm going to do? I want the bow to be in the right direction, so we'll do it this way. All right, and again, I left quite a bit of a border with the brown paper. Um, you could bring yours much closer to the edge if you wanted to, but I kind of like seeing the packing paper. So I'm going to add some ink to this and get the edges inked. And then we'll probably end up putting some type of pocket or tuck spot, something I normally do on the front and back covers, or I may do a collage, you know, something decorative. Um, I, I, I like sometimes to do like the, the, the name plates, like this journal belongs to. 
I think um, that's a nice touch so people can personalize their journals if they want to. Okay, the other thing we're also going to do is we're gonna be sewing the signatures into here. But again, I'm going to glue this piece in to just give us, I think a little bit of decoration. Hmm. I'm trying to decide if I just wanna leave it brown. I'm gonna think about that while we glue these down. All right, I know it's hard for you guys to see because I did not ink here for you. I'm gonna draw a line with my brown pen so you can see where it is because um, I didn't think to ink it before, before we got this far and I don't want to turn my book inside out. Um, to try to ink it. I don't want to bend it backwards. So hopefully you guys can see that line because these pieces, I just want to get centered nicely. All right. So again, more glue. Um, what, what I might do is let's do this. We're going to add a little bit of glue stick and then I'm going to add a little bit of the wet white glue right around these edges really well. So I know all of this is gonna get stuck down really good. Since I had the glue stick out, a lot of times I just don't, don't bother. I just use the wet white glue and I do this all over it, right? Um, but since the glue stick was sitting there, it was calling my name. Now this is also when, if you feel you need to add any glue to that packing paper, be careful not to rip my paper like I already did once but I just covered it up so you don't even see it but like right here if I feel like I need a little bit of glue now would be the time it's not even wanting to lift up to let me put the glue under there right here like if I need a little bit of glue now's the time to do that all right so we're getting lots of layers I've already inked this one and that's also making our cover thicker as we go, because we're getting lots of layers on here. All right. I have always loved paper, scissors, glue, like adhesive makes me happy. And I've been that way since I was a child. I love playing with paper. Do you guys have hobbies and things that you've enjoyed your whole life? Or am I the only one? I hope I'm not the only one. I don't think I am. Let me know. Leave me a comment. Tell me what are some things that you've um, been passionate about and enjoyed your whole life. Oh, how pretty. Yep. It's going to be, I think, really special. I'm going to leave that. We're going to sew these signatures in. And when I was looking at it with this here, maybe it's because I made this taller. I'm not sure. It's just not quite looking right. But these signatures are going to get sewn in here. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And it's going to be great. And then there's plenty of room. I did that one and a half inch. I thought about just doing a one inch, but I want lots of room. Um, for pockets and layers and things on these pages. So I think we're going to be in a good space. All right, so for the back, I am going to go ahead and make the decision to glue this page down that matches the front. And if I want to then add some pretty pretties, I can do that too. But I think this is going to look really good. And I don't want to lose this piece of paper. So we're going to, that's just ink. I don't know how I got that there, but it's all right. Matching it up so it looks like they're having about the same distance all the way around like I did on the front cover. So again, I'm going to use the strategy of starting with my glue stick. And then we'll add additional glue especially around these edges. All right. 
I think if you didn't want to do this as an advent, um, it would be fun to make one where you like maybe journal each day in the month of December, um, maybe about what you're doing to prepare for the holidays, or you could put even like your lists. Whoops, this is upside down. It's fun to, um, I think, sometimes go back in later years and re be able to remember what what you were doing so like for 2024 you know what were the things that were on your mind what were you shopping for and I think since this is a journal and I'm gonna have it be interactive you know for each day leading up to Christmas I definitely am gonna make sure whether it's on a tag or somewhere on the page there is some space for journaling for those types of thoughts um, I'm definitely going to be adding ink to this brown packing paper. But I'll probably do more of that a little bit later, but I think it makes it look nice and it's really starting to come together. All right, now we just need to sew in the signatures. So what you need to do this, and don't, don't get intimidated, but to make sure they're nice and neat. A lot of people ask me, how do you get it sewn in so neatly? You know, mine don't look like that. Um, making a, a, a very easy, quick template makes all the difference. So you need a strip of paper that is one and a half inches wide and eight and seven eighths inches tall because that is the exact same as your spine. Okay, folds up in there perfectly. All right, and I want, I'm doing two signatures. So I want them spaced on the spine. Um, the equal measurement. <laughs> I'm sorry, my words, my words. So the first thing I do in an inch and a half, the center point is three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna mark that. And again, I'm using my pencil if I mess up. It's not a problem. Now, I want the two signatures to be sewn in so that they're the, the same distance from the middle and the same distance from the edge. So there's probably math people out there that immediately would tell me where I need to put this. When you're doing three signatures, it's super easy. You can just fold your paper. You fold it in half and in half again, and then those three crease lines, you are golden. But, you know what? That will work even for two. Let me show you. I believe it will. All right, so fold your template in half. Nice and neat because you want also where you are sewing, you want it to be straight. And then we can go in half again or we can just fold each of these to the center. Make sure it's really neat this way. Da, 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 da. I could have made this off camera, but then you guys would not get to see me struggle with my math, but it's all good. All right, so let me think this through. If we put a signature here and a signature here, I guess that doesn't work. Y'all can laugh at me later. Um, because what that does is we have a much larger um, gap in the middle than we do from the two sides. So if you did that with me, sorry, we're going to start over. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I am just going to make the executive decision that we are going to come in a half an inch from the left side, and then I'm going to turn my ruler over and we are going to come a half an inch from the right side. So I'm gonna mark it in several places and then we're gonna draw the lines so that I know I get them nice and neat. And I think this is gonna be close enough. It's gonna look good and everything's gonna be fine and I don't have to do complicated math. See how I get through life? <laughs> half an inch, half an inch, half an inch. All right, I'm just going to connect these lines so I know they're nice and straight. We'll see what it looks like here in a second. I got to keep going. I can't stop the video and start over because I don't know how to edit it. 
oh, look, I think it looks fabulous. That's what we're going to go with. So one signature is going to be sewn in on this line and one signature is going to be sewn in on this line. Now, to get where, I'm going to do a three-hole pamphlet, super easy pamphlet stitch. We are going to fold the paper in half this way. And then I want my stitches to come about that distance from the top and bottom. I just eyeballed it. It's about an inch. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my ruler and I'm gonna draw a line where I folded the paper because this is where we are gonna put our holes. We're gonna have a hole here, here, and here for one signature, here, here, and here for the second signature. Now, I always mark the top because if we get turned around, it, it even though I folded it, it, even that little bit getting off, if I poke the holes for one of the signatures with the top here and then I flip it around this way, it, it just doesn't work. And I've never been able to figure out why that's the case, but I have messed it up before and it did not work. So keep the top to the top and make sure you got your journal the way that you want it. Now, you are gonna hold this template very carefully in where the spine is. And that's where those two lines help us see, right? Get it nice and straight because this is again, what will make your finished product look fabulous. We're only doing two signatures, so it's a little bit easier. You know, when I do five, seven, 12, all of that, we have a lot of lines and a lot of holes to punch. And you gotta be careful. I'm just using a paper piercer. I just touched, you know, it didn't go all the way through, but where each of the holes need to be. And now I'm going to poke the holes all the way through. Now this is for an exposed spine. I believe I have some tutorials on how to make a hidden spine if you don't wanna see the stitching on the outside. But I don't know, for me, I love seeing the stitching on the outside, especially when there's multiple um, signatures. I just think it looks nice and it's, it's handmade. I don't know. I just, it makes me happy. But I have done plenty. And basically what you do is you just build a, a spine, you sew them in, and then you attach it here so that you don't see anything on the outside. But um I guess I believe I have a video showing that, but if you, you need some, if you would like to see that done, um, let me know. Because not everybody likes the exposed spine look. All right, let's set our cover aside for just a minute. I've already put my signatures together. These each have six pages. One, two, three, four, five, six. Folded in half. These are from the kit. There were um, 12 that had a pretty design, different things. I'll show you once we sew them in. And then I printed each one. This came with the kit with this kind of, um, it's a, a, a more neutral page with a holly pattern in the background. And I think it's beautiful. I think I'm going to have Santa be the first signature. And then we'll have this lovely winter um, scene. It's kind of like Charles Dickens kind of themed paper um, for the second signature. We need this template still because we are going to use this to help us. Now, where did I put my paper piercer? You need your paper piercer again um, to punch our holes. So again, you want to make sure you have the top. Now, our papers are not um, the same height as our spine. So it is going to be important that, and I only have two, so I'm, I'm gonna eyeball it, but you just, you wanna make sure, I, I'll, I'll mark where I'm putting it, um, that the two signatures you do, you do them the same so that they line up the same in the journal. You don't wanna have your template up like this for one and down like this for another. You want your template laid out exactly the same, you know, as close as possible. So I drew a line to show me where I need the top of my page and the bottom of my page, confirming I have my paper turned the correct way for the top. And I'm going to use this line to help me know where I need to poke that hole. 
And now, same thing. I'm gonna push it all the way through. And if you're careful, you should get pretty close to the crease line on both sides, okay? It's a little off on this one, but it'll be all right. You won't even see it. All right, so that was the first one. And we're gonna do the exact same thing with the second one. Like I say, you just wanna make sure, you know, you, you get all your papers together, clip them together, um, however many pages you want. I picked this number because it's gonna be the perfect number for my 25 days that I'm gonna be counting to for my Advent journey. So, but you know, you, you could have more pages, um, however you wanna do your journal. But again, mine each have six so that each signature basically ends up with 12 pages. All right, they're both poked. So we don't need our paper piercer anymore. We can put it away. And we don't need our template anymore, but a lot of times I will, I have a stack of these on my desk. Like this is the one I use for my little golden books or a two inch spine with five signatures. I've actually extended it for other journals. I have others sitting here. A lot of times I'll save them in case I wanna make a journal of a similar size. I already have it made. Okay, now we are going to sew them in. We are almost done for today, for today's video. I am using a waxed thread. You could use embroidery floss. You know, there's lots of options. I'm going to make my thread approximately three times the length of my signature. And I need one piece for each signature. So I need a total of two pieces. And... I'm going to go ahead and just cut both of them, set this aside. This wax thread comes in different colors, too. So if you don't want brown, you know, there's other colors as well. I like brown. <laughs> All right, I'm going to thread my big eye needle. And we are going to start sewing. So again, make sure you have your cover turned the correct way. I'm gonna start with the first signature and I'm going to tie these on the inside. So we're gonna start from the inside center hole. I've shown you guys this in other videos, but if you're new here, this might be new to you. If not and you wanna fast forward, feel free. All right, we're gonna start in the center and then we are going to start in the center hole of the cover. And I always tend to work left to right. I guess you could start the other direction. Again, this is only two signatures, so it's not that confusing. All right, we're gonna pull our thread through. Doesn't matter if you go top to top or bottom, but I'm gonna go to the top. So we're gonna, we've come up through the back and now we're gonna go back inside through the top hole and through the top hole of the signature. And I am kind of double checking. Everything's fitting in here the way it's supposed to. It's looking good so far. Don't pull your tail through. Make sure you leave enough for the tail. Skip the center hole and go through the bottom hole. And again, I've shown you guys this like with a single signature and with multiple signatures. So hopefully this is helpful. Bottom hole and the bottom hole of the cover, just make sure you didn't get off and you didn't pick the wrong hole. You want everything to line up. And now we are gonna come back up through the center hole. Now this is where you may have to do something like this. You know, see it come through, find your center hole here. You wanna be careful not to pierce through your thread like I did, so I was just careful and pulled it back through. And we are done there. Now this is an important piece. See how I've got both of my threads to this side of the center? You want them underneath, one on each side. Start pulling that together. So we've got this, this um, straight um, piece that you've sewn in, your two tails underneath, one on either side. Double check that the front looks good. It's looking great. And now we're gonna tie our signature in. You want it nice and snug, tight. Don't be too tight where it 
messes it up. <laughs> you know, you tear your paper, but nice and snug. And I do three. And I'm going to go ahead and just leave the tails long in case I want to do something. We could add a little dangle. I tend to do a lot of like little paper circles or hearts with decorations, or I just leave them plain. We can also tie a bow, you know. You could do beads and things, and if they hang down the bottom, that would probably be okay, but you know, you gotta think how much, how much thickness do you want inside your journal. Now you're gonna get to see these gorgeous pages because we are gonna crease each one. Right there at a candy shop. There's a pretty tree. A uh, family having a nice meal decorated for the holidays. And I like how some of these are, um, you know, faded sort of. So you could even write or journal in there if you wanted to. And then some of the images are a little bit brighter. There's Santa. And I do this with each page of the signature. I like to just crease. This also gives me the chance to make sure I didn't slip my stitch and everything is fitting nicely in my journal. Now we are going to repeat the process um, with this signature. And again, if you wanna see it again, that's great, stick with me. If you wanna fast forward, feel free. I sometimes get criticized that my videos are too long and I could edit better. You know what? I'm doing the best I can. So you guys all have a fast forward button if you don't want to watch me sew my last signature in. But I can do it pretty quick if I'm not trying too hard to explain the process. I'm doing it the exact same way. If you need to see it again, you can watch or go back and listen to me talk you through it. We're gonna come up through the last, the center hole, which is gonna be our last piece. Find it. And there we go. And again, make sure I have one thread on either side. I always check the back, make sure everything is pulled nice and neat and tie three times. So once you get going on sewing in signatures, they come, they actually sew in very quickly, or I think they do with this three pamphlet stitch. There's a five pamphlet stitch, I think there's a seven. I tend to stick with three, but I've, I've done the others. Ice skating. Um, but yeah, it comes together pretty quickly. There you go. So we're gonna look at these beautiful pages while I crease them. Look at that stack of presents. I think Joey just outdid himself with this journal kit. I am so happy to use it and to make this. All right, there we go. Now, it's beautiful. It's going to get nice and fluffy, chunky, have lots of beautiful things in there. I think everything coordinates well together. Preview, in the next uh, next, um, installment of this video, we are going to be using these fun number squares and decorative pieces to make 25 different, I think this is three, um, 25 different pockets. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to fold them with the book page and do a, a variety. I've already done 14 of them, so in the video, I'll show them to you. We'll fold 10 more and um, make sure everybody knows how to make these and how to decorate them. And we'll start installing them on the pages. Video three will be us making all kinds of tags and ephemera and journaling cards and things like that. And we may add other pockets as well, but these are gonna be the ones that kind of count us to Christmas on our Advent journey. Okay. I hope you like it. I hope you'll join me for the whole series. Let me know what you think. Um, love to hear from you. Uh, as always, thank you for watching and y'all have a great day until next time.